Hey guys and welcome to another video. In this video I'm going to be giving you all a ZMI pretty comprehensive guide. Um, this guide is going to require Lunar Diplomacy to be done, 71 magic for the Aranya Teleport, an Earth Staff of any sort, Essence Pouches, and a Rune Pouch. Um, because Lunar Diplomacy has to be done, the minimum defense that you will have is 40. So if you have under 40 defense, that means you do not have Lunar Diplomacy done, which means this guide is not for you. Um, so go ahead and get Lunar Diplomacy done, and you can use this guide in the future. Um, you can use a Staff of Earth, Lava Battle Staff, Mud Battle Staff, or a Dust Battle Staff. It does not matter which one you use, they all give earth runes, it's just that dust gives airs as well, mud gives water, and then lava gives fires as well. Um, it doesn't matter, you just need a staff that gives you earth runes. I am personally using a dust battle staff because it looks cool. Um, if you want to use a mud staff because it looks cool, feel free. Um, other than that, in your rune pouch from level 1 to 99, you are going to have air runes, wall runes, and astral runes. The air runes are going to be used for payments, and the law runes and astral runes, along with the dust battle staff, are going to be used for the Aranya teleport. And then whenever you craft cosmics at the end of a trip, you're going to be using NPC contact to repair your pouches. And that obviously is going to use the airs, the astrals that you have, and then any cosmics that you RC um, during the trip. So other than that, let's go ahead and get into the video. I broke up the video into three different sections. The first one is tips, which is just going to be some general tips for when you are doing ZMI room crafting, which will make it a little bit easier for you and um, kind of show you uh, just some basically how to get the most XP out of uh, doing ZMI alter. The next one is going to be uh, some clips from all the different sorts of levels so you're gonna have 1 to 75 is, is one of the brackets and then 75 to 99 is another one of the brackets but in 1 to 75 uh, depending on your level you're gonna be able to use a different amount of pouches and I'll show you guys how to ideally empty and fill the all of those pouches depending on how, what, which ones you're using at the time and then other than that we're gonna go ahead and get into the gear and the gear is broken up into high level um, high level but not too expensive gear and then we have a medium level, so like bottom of the bottom. And then on top of that, we have the low levels, which is going to be like the void peers that want to try this out. And um, in there, I'll mention a few items that give some really good defense bonuses and prayer bonuses. Um, they are mostly expensive items, um, but there are a few pretty cheap ones or free ones that don't take too much time to get. And they'll definitely benefit you when it comes to ZMI Alter. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get into the tips. Um, the first tip that we're going to go ahead and get into is bank fillers and how to use those to your advantage. Okay, so for the first tip, um, we're going to go over bank fillers and general bank tips. Um, so the first thing before you start ZMI, make sure you have one of every single rune in your bank um, or at least placeholder. As you can see, there's a law rune here, placeholder, which is fine. Um, you do not need combination runes in your bank, but you do need, uh, I'll just go ahead and list it out. You need fires, natures, chaos, soul, blood, earth. Death, Astral, Law, Body, Cosmic, Mind, Water, and Air Runes. So make sure you have at least one of those in your bank um, before you go ahead and fill your bank, which I will show you guys in just a second here. The other thing is too, whichever rune crafting pouches you're using and your main rune pouch, which holds your runes obviously, make sure they're not placeholded in your bank because if they are, when you go to deposit your whole inventory, they'll obviously go in the bank. So you want to release all of these placeholders depending on which pouches you're using. And other than that, if you go over to here, um, one thing that you're gonna wanna do is X out the deposit worn items button. Um, as you can see, it was down here. This just makes it so you can't misclick deposit all worn items, which gets really annoying, especially if you're kind of getting used to all the clicks. And other than that, once you have all of that done, you're just gonna go ahead here and fill your bank. And as you can see, a bunch of these um, yield signs popped up and it filled my bank to 800 out of 800. And that is good. Um, another thing, obviously you're gonna wanna have your pure essence and your stamina potions in your bank. Um, an easy way to make stamina potion ones, I did not know this, so I will show you guys really quickly. Well, I didn't know it until recently. If you have an empty inventory, obviously I don't, but assume I do, you withdraw uh, sorry, seven stamina four pots, and then you withdraw a full inventory of vials, and you can use the empty vials directly on the stamina fours. Previously, when I made lower dose pots, I always did use 
Um, so I would always basically do this. I'd go use stamina four on the vial. And that obviously leads to a lot of misclicks and ac accidental drinks, and that's not a good thing. So that is just a kind of quick tip there as well. Um, you can use higher doses of the stamina potions. Um, it is really just personal preference for me to use ones because uh, the way that you bank is basically you take a sip while you're filling your pouches and then you put it back in the bank. Um, so you don't really need ones technically, but I just prefer to use ones. Okay, so we have gotten the bank pretty much down. I don't think I've missed anything. So the next part that we're going to go ahead and get into is um, the Abyssal Book. So whenever you go to use NPC Contact and you talk to the Dark Mage to repair your pouches, if you do not have this item in your bank, which is the Abyssal Book, um, right here, if you do not have it in your bank, then the dialogue to repair a pouch is a lot longer. So the way to get this book is you just go to the dark uh, mage in the middle of the abyss and you talk to him and ask for his book basically and he'll give you a book and that's how you do that and it saves you a lot of time when it comes to repairing pouches so absolutely make sure you have one of these in your bank. You don't need to do anything special with it, just have it in your bank, that's it. Okay, so other than that, um, you AHK is obviously useful here. I'll put a basic RC script, the one that I'll be using in the video, in the description if you guys want to use it. It's not necessarily needed. My friend doesn't use it, and he gets pretty much ideal XP rates, but um, it always does help, and it makes it a little bit more convenient if you do want to use it. Uh, use it at your own risk, though. I don't want anybody like getting banned and then blaming me. Um, you should not get banned for using this script, but just kind of like a disclaimer. Don't blame me if you do happen to get banned somehow. Um, so yeah, AHK. And then also when you're emptying pouches, I'll show you guys this in the future clips to come. But when you are emptying pouches, um, basically you're going to have a full inventory of pure essence and we're going to click the altar and you're going to have an XP drop pop up over here. Uh, make sure your XP drops are on, by the way. Uh, you're going to have an XP drop over here. And when the XP drop gets right around here, right near the prayer icon, um, what you're gonna do is that's the moment you're gonna empty your pouches and then click on the altar. I'll show you guys uh, just a little bit more in depth than you know in the video, but um, that's just kind of a quick tip and something to look out for while I am showing you how to empty the pouches properly. And just before we get into the gear discussion, um, you obviously need to unlock the Aranya teleport. And to do so, you're just gonna go to Lunar Isle up north to this walking chicken house. You're gonna go inside and you're gonna speak to Baba Yaga. And Baba Yaga will have a option that says, basically there's a spell in my spell book that I can't use, can you help me out? And you go through some dialogue and it's a quick unlock there. Um, so yeah, that's how you actually unlock the spell. So now we're gonna get, go ahead and start discussing the gear. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and get into the gear discussion. So the first thing that I should mention is um, the discussion on if you should use populated worlds versus non-populated worlds. Um, I would recommend personally that you do not use populated worlds. Um, I would recommend that you use uh, a server that is closest to you. So the actual ZMI world is on a German server, and unless you live in Germany or near Germany, you're probably better off going to an American world if you, uh, obviously, if you live in the U.S., or you're going to a U.K. world if you live in the U.K. Uh, this is because, honestly, lag and ping have a huge role when it comes especially in rune crafting when there's so much clicking and timing that you have to get down um, it can affect your xp rates upwards of 5k xp per hour so always focus on a world that you can connect to securely um, and when i say securely i just mean that you have a low ping on and low lag on um, and then also obviously if there's a lot of people in your world and you have a bad computer that can also affect your xp rates because your computer not might might not be able to handle um loading all the objects and everything around you so uh, just go ahead and keep that in mind when you are choosing a world to rc on now if you are low defense you will probably have to use a very populated world um, but i will give a few tips later on um, on how to avoid using a, a super populated world but still taking as little damage as possible again this guide is for people as low as 40 defense so i'm trying to throw in a little bit of everything for everyone so the first thing that we're going to talk about is a general setup so this is for high levels that are poor basically um as you can see i have the region bracelet and the hit points cape and i would not 
mimic this setup at all honestly because as you can see here i have a negative seven kilograms which means i have a, a whole seven kilograms of gear that i can switch out um, to get some higher defense bonuses while also staying below or at zero kilograms so um, this is just kind of a, a a rough thing because i am 99 defense and 99 hp i gain 60 i uh, sorry i gain 4 hp every 60 seconds and i get obviously hit less often because i'm 99 defense so that is my the reasoning behind my gear setup it is not ideal at all to find your ideal setup it's going to depend on your levels what you what gear you have available how much your bank is worth stuff like that and we will get into that so um the first thing is if you are somewhat not extremely wealthy and what you want to do basically is focus on your melee defenses and your magic defenses as well as your prayer uh, bonus and this is because um, you can go ahead and pray range while you're running through the area or you can just go ahead and flick it on and off whenever you notice that something is about to aggro on you um, that is the most ideal way to do it just up this ladder i'm currently at zmi by the way but just up this ladder there is an altar i'll show you guys how to um, use that efficiently but there is a altar here so you can restore your prayer which means that you can protect range if you need to if you have a little bit more flexibility because you have a little bit more money and uh item choice then you can just get honestly like full out uh melee mage and range defensive bonuses and um you shouldn't take much damage at all honestly um, if you are not 99 hp i would recommend probably just using an arty cloak um if you again if you're not using full graceful and uh just use like an arty cloak Something I should mention really quickly is that if you're not using Full Graceful, it's beneficial to use Boots of Lightness and a spottier cape because that makes you way less than Full Graceful. The only reason you should use Full Graceful ever is for the set effect, which is when you stand still, you gain run energy at twice the rate. And this is only when you stand still, so it's not when you're moving around. Most of the time, you're moving around with RC, so the set effect for Full Graceful is not really that useful. The only time I would use Full Graceful is if you are confident that you will not take any damage, or if you're on an extremely populated world where you won't be taking much damage anyways. If you are maxed or wealthy or high level, you can obviously use items such as the Max Cape. You can use an Ellie Spirit Shield if you want. Um, a Spectral Spirit Shield is highly recommended, though, because of the magic defense. And another expensive item that all accounts can use is a Ring of Suffering Imbued. It gives 20 defense bonuses and, and everything and 4 prayer. Um, and again, it is a somewhat expensive item, but any account can use it. So especially those lower level accounts which don't have such a huge item pool to choose from, I would highly recommend you use a Ring of Suffering. And I would highly recommend all accounts use a Region Bracelet as well because it gives you, I think, 2 HP every, set, uh, every minute. And then other than that, um, some other items that you can use if you're a medium level and you don't have as much money is items such as a crystal shield, you can use a glory, you can use borrow gloves if you do not have a region bracelet. Again, I understand some people may not have enough money to buy a region bracelet, but I would highly, highly, highly recommend you get a region bracelet if you can. Um, so some lower level uh, tips for people with low defense in the 40 range, which would be our Void Pures and our Zerks. You want to wait until someone runs ahead of you if you're able to. Obviously, don't sit around and wait for somebody to run ahead of you. But if you notice somebody is about to go, um, you want to wait for them to run ahead of you. And that way, the monsters mostly aggro on them. You will get a few aggros on you, but it kind of uh, protects you a little bit there. And then other than that... Obviously, try to get the items such as the Ring of Suffering Imbued and the Region Bracelet if you can. They do cost a bit, but they are really going to make a difference in your ZMI experience specifically because you guys do not have many items to choose from when it comes to bonuses. So um, these items are going to be extremely beneficial for you. Other than that... Um, I should mention really quickly that Rapid Heal does not stack with a Region Bracelet or an HP Cape. So if you have a Region Bracelet equipped or a Hit Points Cape equipped, do not use Rapid Heal because you are wasting your prayer. There is no point in using it. Rapid Heal is a good alternative for people that cannot afford a Region Bracelet or do not have a Hit Points Cape. So Rapid Heal is good, but just keep in mind that do not use it if you have a Region Bracelet because they do not stack. 
and then three other items that I quickly had jotted down. Uh, the first one is the Gnome Amulet. It gives 13 in all defenses. That's pretty good, obviously, um, and it's free. It's just from a quest, so if you can get access to that, you can go ahead and use that. Halos from Castle Wars are also a good item. They give a good magic defense, and they give some good prayer bonus. Again, this is probably an item that some of those lower level defense accounts are going to want to use. And other than that, we also have the Runner Hat from Barbarian Assault. It gives you negative weight and 30 defenses in melee. Um, it doesn't take too long to get, so if you are honestly, rec if, if you're a lower level that really needs some new items to put onto your account for ZMI, and you plan on doing ZMI for a very long time, I would highly recommend you just go ahead and take the time to get a runner hat from Barbarian Assault because it's extremely, extremely beneficial for low-level accounts. So, I think that's been everything in regards to the gear. Obviously, there's going to be a lot of experimenting when it comes to what you want to use for your specific account. Um, I use what I use because of my stats and because of my personal preferences, and that's pretty much how it's going to basically go down for you guys i did try to give you a little you know some a few tips here and there um so hopefully you will take those tips and figure out the best gear for yourself again um if you are going to be praying range just make sure to keep high melee defense high magic defense and high prayer bonus make sure no matter what you're doing you have at least zero or below in your weight and yeah, that's pretty much it. So now I'm going to go ahead and quickly show you guys how to use the altar efficiently. And then we'll go ahead and actually get into the using the ZMI bank and withdrawing and using essence on the altar. All right, guys. So if you are obviously praying while you're at ZMI, you are going to run out of prayer eventually and you will get low on prayer. So this is how you're going to efficiently use the altar without losing any ticks. Um, so as you can see here, this is where you teleport to. Um, when you use the Orania teleport and right up here is where the ladder and the altar is at so when you're running up to the altar you're gonna go ahead and click on the altar hopefully I get this right the first time and you're gonna instantly click on the ladder and as you can see there there was absolutely no delay I think there was a slight delay because I kind of messed up but um, if you get it once you start perfecting it properly there will be absolutely no delay in restoring your prayer and going down the ladder which means you you literally can infinitely pray and you will never lose any time or prayer points technically all right so the last thing before we actually get into how to efficiently runecraft um a lot of preparation goes into zmi honestly so the last thing is the actual bank so when you go to uh, first use the bank this menu is going to appear now you can select runes and it'll use 20 of that rune to open your bank up however if you talk to this guy and you choose the option that says i'd like to talk to you about my quick payment details or deal whatever um and you go through the you can you can select so you can choose which rune it'll always take from you now as i mentioned you're going to want to have you want to use air runes as your payment method so if you click on the air runes he will default to air runes and if you want to cancel it or change it if you accidentally click the wrong rune or something you can just go into here and you can go i'd like to talk to you about my quick payment deal and there's an option to cancel and there's an option to check which one you currently have so now whenever you go to use the bank it is a one-click bank and it's extremely nice keep in mind if you keep doing this you will be losing runes it does take it out of the pouch obviously um but it doesn't say it here but um, you are using runes as you do this so make sure not to spam it make sure to just keep in mind that you are using runes whenever you do open the bank um, so that's that. Now we can actually go ahead and get into how to Z ZMI runecraft while you're actually down here. So while you're down in ZMI, there are two paths. As you can, as you can see here, there's, these, there's this narrow one here and there's this thick one here. The narrow one is a very long one that is, there are no monsters on it, but again, it is a very long path. And this is the path in which you're going to take. And this is the one that has the monsters on it, but it is the shorter path to the altar. So um, I'm going to go ahead and head over to the altar because I want to show you guys how to efficiently withdraw from your pouches. Um, so that's what I'm going to go ahead and do now. And I'll be right back. 
All right, so right now we are just simply focusing on how to efficiently withdraw and empty your pouches when you're runecrafting. So obviously when you first come up here, you're not going to be standing here for a while, but you're going to be running up and you're going to click on the runecrafting altar. When you click on the runecrafting altar, a little bit of XP is going to pop over here and it's going to scroll upwards. When it scrolls upwards, once it hits about right here near the prayer icon, that's when you're going to go ahead and empty your pouch. So I'll go ahead and do that slow motion on the screen for you guys now so you can kind of get an idea of how to um, do it efficiently. All right, so as you can see there, I did it too early and it did not work. Um, one thing that you want to make sure that you do is never do it too early. You can always wait a little bit after um, and you won't lose any time, but if you do it too early, it just won't work at all. So uh, we're going to go ahead and empty this pouch here and we're going to go ahead and try again. And as you can see there, that one worked. Uh, we waited until it was a little bit higher on the prayer icon and then we went ahead and empty the pouch. Um, another thing to note is that if you withdraw the essence and instantly click on the altar, there is absolutely no delay, and you will not even see the rune essence appear in your uh, the pure essence appear in your inventory. It does kind of mess with you at first, but you'll eventually get used to it once you have all the timings down. Um, so that is something just to keep an eye out for. Um, if it looks like you're not withdrawing essence, you actually are. So as you can see there, I just withdrew from that pouch and I instantly clicked on the altar and you didn't even see pure S come out of the pouch, but it did come out of the pouch for just a brief, like not even a second. It was like a brief moment um, before it was actually used on the altar. So that is how you're going to accurately and efficiently withdraw essence from your pouch and use it on the altar. Now we're going to go ahead and get into the specifics when you're using different amount of pouches. All right, so the first example that we have is from level one to 25 room crafting when, when you can only use a small pouch. So I'm gonna go ahead and go through a whole run with using just the small pouch so that you guys can see that. All right, and so the next clip that we have is going to be for levels 25 to 50 when you can use the small and the medium pouch. All right, so for the next clip, we have levels 65 to 75 when you're able to use the small, medium, and large pouches all at once. There is a difference here, though. Uh, the difference is, um, you will obviously see it in the video, but I'll explain it to you really quickly. When you go to runecraft, you're going to runecraft whatever's in your inventory. You're going to only withdraw from the large pouch and runecraft that. And then you're going to withdraw from your small and your medium pouch and runecraft that. So I'll go ahead and show you guys now how to do that. And the last clip for this section of the video, um, we are almost done with the complete guide, is 75 to 99 room crafting. You will obviously have access to all four of uh, the room crafting pouches. And the way this is going to work is 
Um, it, it's a little bit complex because it's not as simple and straightforward as the previous methods, but essentially what you're going to do is you're going to fill these as you'll see in the video. Um, and then when you get to the rune crafting altar, you're going to rune craft all of the essence that are in your inventory as normal. The next thing that you're going to do is you are going to pay very, very close attention to what gets rune crafted. So if there are cheap runes such as mine runes and body runes in these two slots right here, what you're going to do is you're going to drop those. Obviously there will be uh, four runes here total in these spots above the pouches. Um, so if you notice that one column has cheaper runes than the other column, then you're obviously going to want to choose the cheapest runes to drop. Um, this is for XP purposes and it's also for GP purposes because uh, like 90% of the time one of these columns is going to have utter shit in the column so you can just get rid of it. There's no reason to keep it and it'll make it so that you withdraw more essence from the pouch and use it on the altar. Again, it's a little bit confusing but once you see how it works, it'll make a little bit more sense. So. Once you do the drop, drop, withdraw, withdraw, and then use that on the altar, you're obviously going to have two other pouches still in your inventory, and you're going to essentially repeat what you did previously. Um, you do not have to drop runes above the pouches that you're going to withdraw from. And what I, mean, what I mean by that is if you have a mind rune right here and a body rune right here, but you need to withdraw essence from these two pouches next, you can drop these two and move your mouse over really quickly to empty from these two pouches. Um, so it's going to take a lot of paying attention to get the ideal XP rates as well as the GP rates that you want. Um, but just you're going to have to pay attention pretty closely. So I'll do a few laps of this just so I can show you guys uh, kind of how it's all going to work. I do not promise that this will be efficient, meaning that I withdraw the essence and use the essence on the altar as efficiently as possible because right now I'm just trying to show you how to choose and decide which runes to drop and then how to go from there so I will go ahead and get into this part of the video Okay, so right now we are coming up on the altar, so as normal, we're going to go ahead and craft rune on the altar. Uh, it didn't work for some reason, that's nice. And we're going to watch our XP. And as you can see here, so uh, we have either one water rune or four, uh, one water rune and four chaos or two mine runes and two cosmics. You're going to probably want to drop this uh, row right here. So what you're going to do is obviously not this slow because you have to think about it a lot faster than that but you're going to drop those and withdraw from these pouches messed up there a little bit so let's go ahead and redo that that's how you'll do it ideally and then you'll go ahead and obviously runecraft these as you can see here we only have we have five chaos two waters here and we only have one earth rune here so that's actually really nice because all we have to do is go ahead and um, drop this single rune, withdraw from these two pouches, and then use that on the inventory. Uh, sorry, use that on the rune crafting altar. Now the thing is, if you go ahead and empty these pouches, you'll notice that we still have some pure essence left over. That's completely fine. Do not worry about that. It is not worth spending the extra time to withdraw and use those two extra essence on the altar. So just, it's fine. Do not worry about it. Just do not worry about it. So now we're going to go ahead and head back to the bank and I'll do a few more laps sped up to show you guys how to uh, just to give you guys a little bit better idea on how to do it from 75 onwards. As you saw there, I chose two runes from two separate um, 
columns. That's only because I got really unlucky with those spawns. I did not want to get rid of the natures, obviously. I did not want to get rid of the uh, law runes, obviously. Um, if you don't care about GP too much, you can go ahead and do that occasionally. But because I didn't want to get rid of those, I just went ahead and dropped like that and then withdrew from um, from the pouches. So um, it's really just up to pr your personal preference. It's definitely worthwhile to drop runes and then withdraw from the pouches and use it on the altar. Um, but depending on if you actually want to drop the runes or not, if you're here for GP, then you might not want to drop all of the runes every single time. But if you're here for XP, you, you're going to want to drop uh, two sets of runes before you withdraw from these pouches. So, so as you can see here, we are running low on energy. Um, I haven't been through the whole video, obviously, because I've been resting in between. But now I'll show you guys how to efficiently use a stamina pot in your bank. So when you deposit your inventory, you're going to withdraw a stamina pot. You're going to fill and drink at the very same time. And then you're going to deposit the vial and fill your other pouches. Go back into your bank and get the essence out. Um, so that's basically how you're going to restore your run energy. And you will be doing that extremely frequently, so just get used to it. it, um, it that's pretty much how you're going to have to do it. And again, because of the way that works, you can also use um, more than... You don't have to use one dose. I just prefer to. You can use any dose of a energy or stamina pot that you want to for that. So, And as you can see here, we finally have a decayed pouch. So really quickly, I'll just go ahead and show you how you're going to do a trip when you do have a decayed pouch. You're going to have it at the beginning of the trip. So when you first bank, you will never have it at this point. Um, but you like when you're putting the in essence in the pouches, uh, it will decay at that point. So that'll be at the bank. So pretend it just decayed at the bank. We're going to go ahead and do a normal run. Um, and it doesn't matter, again, how many pouches you have. We're just going to go ahead and do a normal run of ZMI. And then once we teleport to Aranya, we're going to instantly use the NPC contacts, select the Dark Mage, and just spam Spacebar. And that is how fast it is to repair a pouch. And again, you'll get the Cosmics from the ZMI run. If for some reason you don't, which it'll be extremely rare if you don't, um, just go ahead and do another run with a decayed pouch and go ahead and repair it at the end of the uh end of the zmi run so that is going to go ahead and call it for the zmi guide i hope you guys did enjoy and i hope it did help you guys out if it did feel free to share it with your friends if they're having any questions about zmi if you have if you're still having some questions when it comes to room crafting and zmi in general feel free to leave them in the comments and i'm sure either myself or other um, people on the channel will get to answering your questions hopefully as accurately as they can um, other than that, I will see you guys tomorrow with another episode of Zaya Captive. For those of you that have actually, if you're, if you're still watching at the end of the video, um, and you're just now coming to my channel, I basically created a series titled Zaya Captive in which it's a Zaya Iron Man account that's able to leave to the mainland for 30 minutes after 250,000 experience has been gained. So far we have three episodes. The fourth one is coming out tomorrow and the feedback that I've gotten um, from it so far has been extremely positive. Uh, so if you guys want to go check that out, feel free. Um, I will leave a link for that in the description and it'll probably honestly pop up in the sidebar. So, uh, other than that, again, hope you guys did enjoy and I'll catch you guys tomorrow with another episode of Zaya Captive.